Welcome to our virtual career day. Today, I'm Gabby, by the way. We are talking with Joyce from Gear Up Fire Rescue, a volunteer fire company from Frederick, Maryland. How are you? Hi, good morning. How are you? I'm happy you in there, like the most of us are. <laughs> um, we're happy to have you. We're happy to still be sharing insights about different career paths. And yours is extremely interesting to me. Um, growing up, I always thought that I could be a firefighter. Clearly, I went the, a different path. Um, but we want to learn a little bit about how you even became a volunteer firefighter. I actually, you're going to laugh. I hope so. <laughs> I don't fight fires myself. Okay. Um, in the volunteer world, I work for Frederick County Volunteer Fire and Rescue. And in the volunteer world, we have three different paths. You can be a firefighter. Mm -hmm. You can be an EMT, which all of them or a fire rescue, a rescue person. All of them fall under the general term of firefighter because that is, if you're looking for a position mm -hmm. or a career goal, that's what you're gonna look for as firefighter. However, statistically, emergency medicine is done more so than firefighting in today's world simply because of our knowledge and our um, technology. Mm -hmm. So everybody wants to be a firefighter. Me personally, I. I could care less about fires. I, <laughs> I am not running into a burning building. Go for it if you want to. I'm all good with that. It takes a special person yes. to do that. Yes, it does. I physically am an EMT. I actually went to one of our local carnivals. There's 24-hour corporations here. And they had an antique fire truck out. This has been several years ago. Mm -hmm. And it was an open cab. And I accidentally hit the siren <laughs> with my foot, not knowing it was on the floorboard. And that was it. So, so you were literally alerted. I was literally <laughs> alerted. I created that. And then all of a sudden, next thing you know, I here I am just riding around time after time, paying my little donation round and round to become an EMT. That's awesome. And you guys are essential. So thank you from the get-go for everything that you do and everything that all of your departments do. It's a team effort to... It really is. To yes. really get the job done, I'm sure. Yes. Um, so what is the most rewarding part of your responsibilities in my role I have a little bit of, of I work with all new people coming in mm -hmm. to the service uh, from recruiting to helping train them getting them starting in their what we call their training career with as volunteering with fire and rescue a lot of people don't understand that the skills that they learn in their training will last them a lifetime whether oh, they sure. continue to go into the field or into something else they definitely overlap a lot it's kind of interesting though, mine is people. Mm -hmm. I love talking to people. I love interacting with people and I love teaching people. Knowledge, no one can ever take away from you. So for me, anything I can help you succeed, that is probably my biggest reward out of the job. I love that. You make my heart skip a beat over here. I love that too, when, you're, when you are showing a student or someone who is interested in something that you do, that they have the potential to also hold that knowledge as power. So knowledge is power to me, so yeah. that's awesome. Well, but the other flip side of it though, I think it's kind of interesting, you know, I'm, I'm gonna say this, I'm not allowed to, I know. I'm the oldie. <laughs> okay. So working with the youngies or the newbies as I call them, yeah. um, it's a two-way street. Yeah. You know, I give them knowledge, they provide me about knowledge and it just helps us grow so much more together. And with that togetherness, that's truly what makes us move forward and succeed in today's society. Yeah, I agree. Learning never stops. Definitely. Yeah, so definitely on the flip side, what is the toughest part of your role? At the end of the day, trained or not trained, um, everyone has a role in the service. Mm -hmm. Everyone. We have a operational side. We have a non-operational side. The non-operational are our op officers mm -hmm. and what we need to air fundraising, which it, of course is a major goal for us. Where the operational are the ones who physically get on the equipment and get the equipment out the door to go to the scenes. Everybody works together. We all have a major role. But at the end of the day, my goal and the services goal nationally, internationally, is everyone comes home safely. Absolutely. That's not always necessarily the case, unfortunately, in our mm -hmm. business. So with that, that's one of the hardest part is accepting not everyone can be an operational person. Mm -hmm. And it's hard telling someone you, you, you have a heart, but you may not have the 
physical capability and or the mental capability. Yeah. And we all want to help someone, but how we do it and what we put in our minds to think what we can do versus what we can actually do, mm -hmm. that that tears at me. Well, you want to make sure you have the right people for the right job where they fit right. the most. And right. sometimes that's hard. So deciding, you know, which person goes where or having them, like you say, well, I think I fit here, but you know, as an oldie, mm -hmm. that they may fit in a better place. And and I I believe opportunity should be given. Absolutely. Everyone gets an opportunity. But sometimes I have to say that opportunity can't go forward because I'm not putting you in jeopardy of hurting yourself or anyone else. That's Our goal is to keep everybody safe mm -hmm. and, like I said, to go home at the end of the day. Love that. So if someone wants to join Gear Up Fire Rescue, what is the path that they take? Basically, we have a, I have a Gear Up website, and it's www.gearupfirerescue.com. It's all one word, and they can go on. It gives information about the county. It gives information of what we offer. It has a volunteer interest form. They can fill that out. That comes in, and that basically starts the communication with us. Even if they are um, 16 years old or older, mm -hmm. we have to have that age range. Okay. Um, but anyone, anyone can use that. There's a place at the bottom that says, hey, this is what I'm thinking about. Questions, shoot them in there because that's what actually opens up the door of communication. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Joyce, for joining us. And maybe I'll stop by. I think you should because <laughs> you really would like to gear up. <laughs> Let's get geared up. <laughs> and uh, thanks for coming. You're welcome. Thank you for having me. I hope you have a good day, and I really, truly hope people do consider coming helping us out because we truly do need our volunteers. Bring everyone home safe.